Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I'm in South Baltimore along the Patapsco River in the Middle Branch Park and behind me is the Baltimore Rowing Club, which is what we're going to talk about today. If you're following along real time or close to real time, you may recall our last video. I was down here also covering the Patapsco Delta project, uh, uh, public art sculpture, excuse me, um, not too far from here. And I mentioned the rowing club and I guess I just couldn't resist coming back to uh, to talk about it today. I um, have to start though with a quick thank you to everybody who has donated this year to Baltimore Heritage. Um, we are gearing up for a springtime full of both these uh, five minute histories talks, but also in-person walking tours uh, and building tours. So we are gearing up for a, a full spring and your contributions uh, make that possible. So thank you very much, everybody. All right, we're gonna jump in before we get to the rowing club, we're gonna get to rowing at the beginning. And when I mean the beginning, I mean the very beginning. We're talking about about ancient Egypt. In the year 1430 BC, a pharaoh named Amenhotep II uh, was maybe the first person to record about rowing. Um, he apparently uh, thought highly of himself as a rower. He not only brought peace to today's Syria, uh, but he had his scribes uh, talk about his rowing prowess for all of eternity. That's where we get that. Uh, moving along in history, right around the birth of Christ, Virgil, the poet in the Aeneid, has our hero Aeneas uh, talk about uh, setting up a rowing competition in honor of his father at his father's funeral. And moving along further, in 1200, the Venetians uh, staged rowing competitions on the Grand Canal. Makes sense for Venice, for sure. Um, today, the, or I'm sorry, modern rowing competitions really got their start uh, with the English. Uh, English uh, rowers along the Thames River uh, periodically took a break from ferrying people and stuff across and competed against each other. Um, local wealthy Londoners and, uh, and their own guild halls put up prize money. The oldest rowing race that's still going, that we know about at least, uh, is called, Do it's on the Thames, it's called Doggett's Coat and Badge. And if that's not a British name, I don't know what is. It got its start in 1715 and is still going annually uh, between London Bridge and Chelsea. Um, on this side of the Atlantic, we were not too far behind in establishing rowing competitions. The first recorded rowing competition in America was in 1756 in New York, where a boat uh, called the Perry Auger, a type of boat, uh, out rowed a, uh, a whaling boat from Cape Cod. And if you're like me, you're thinking, what in the world is a Perry Auger? Well, I looked it up. A Perry Auger was a flat bottom boat used for carrying stuff around inland waters like the Hudson River in New York and others. Um, none other than Cornelius Vanderbilt chose the Perry Auger as his boat of choice for the fleet of ferry boats that he built uh, to take people between Lower Manhattan and Staten Island. So the next time you're on the Staten Island Ferry, I can humbly suggest you uh, turn to the person next to you and strike up a conversation about uh, the boat you're on being the direct lineage of the Perry Augers and Cornelius Vanderbilt, the railroad tycoon, and the first uh, modern rowing competition in America. How is that for a smashing start to a, uh, to a conversation? The oldest collegiate rowing competition, though may uh, not surprisingly, took place between Oxford and Cambridge, back to London, in 1829. And interestingly, it was the second oldest intercollegiate sport. Two years before that, those two universities uh, competed, and I'll give you a second to guess what sport. It was cricket. Uh, they, uh, they competed in cricket as the first intercollegiate sport. I think that uh, today in America, we can uh, hold our heads up high with rowing, uh, but we might not be quite there yet yet with cricket. We got a little ways to go. In the United States, the oldest college rowing competition was between Yale and Harvard in 1852. That continues uh, every year to this day, except for years of war and, uh, and COVID, but I think it's back this year. The oldest rowing club, we're gonna round out here just in a second, but the oldest rowing club uh, was in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, it was called the Narragansett Boat Club, and it was in 1838, uh, followed closely in 1839 by the Detroit Boat Club. And all you Philadelphia lovers and Schoolkill and Fairmount Park lovers, I'm sorry, but Philadelphia didn't get its boat scene going until 20 years later in the 18, late 1850s. In Baltimore, coming back to Baltimore here in the rowing club, we got our start, not 
not long after that, uh, in the 1860s, right near the end of the Civil War, with a boat club called the Ariel. It was in Fells Point, uh, housed out of a, a sailcloth making building. That made sense. Um, right after it got started, closely after, were clubs called the Undyne and the Zephyr and the Leriandel. They were over here on the Pato uh, Patapsco um, using land that the Winans family of railroad engineering fame uh, let them borrow uh, uh, over here on this side of the Patapsco in what today is Port Covington. Um, they called themselves the Patapsco Navy, uh, modeled after the school kill Navy up in Philadelphia. They started out competing against themselves, but by the 1920s, they were holding, the clubs here were holding national championship competitions, uh, more than a few of, of which they won, so kind of neat there. But by the mid, middle of the century, Baltimore's waterfront had become heavily industrial, and rowing became tougher, both by avoiding obstacles and, I think, stinkier. And maybe the proverbial nail in the coffin was 1949, when the South Baltimore Hospital tore down the aerial boathouse uh, to build their new hospital building here. That put an end to rowing in Baltimore for several decades, but in, the, in 1979, a number of college rowers, former college rowers, and paddlers of all sorts got together and revived the sport uh, here in Baltimore. Um, it was just two years before that that Mayor William Donald Schaefer dedicated this park with these words. He said, rarely does a city of Baltimore's age have an opportunity to reclaim such an extensive area for boating, aquatic study, bicycling, and other leisure activities. And I think uh, Mayor Schaefer was right and the boating aficionados were right. Today, Baltimore joins cities like uh, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and Cleveland and Camden, New Jersey and Oklahoma City in reclaiming waterfront and restarting rowing activities, all those cities as well. Um, here, the city in 1987 built the wonderful boathouse behind us, behind me. And uh, uh, today, after COVID, now again, thousands of people will come here every year from high school rowing teams and college rowing teams to masters rowers uh, to paddlers of all sorts. You don't need to be an expert to uh, come on out here. Um, we host regattas uh, with teams from as far away as New York and Virginia. And each summer, kids from all over the city come for what's called Camp Waters uh, to learn how to paddle and row uh, from very scratch. So I'm going to wrap up and invite you to come on down here. Middle Branch Park is fantastic. 150 acres of, uh, of fishing piers and boat launches. You can try your hand at rowing. Um, and it's just a short bike ride from downtown um, that is short if you're willing to risk your life over the Hanover Street Bridge. Um, it is all very much worthwhile. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.